Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics Local T. In this video, I'll be covering the system parameter local. I'll start with a concept overview, followed by the implementation that Bevy takes, use cases for local T, and then some examples of where you might use a local. In an ECS, systems need to be able to maintain their own local internal state. In most cases, a system doesn't need to maintain its state between iterations of being run. But when that is required, it is possible to create a local variable that is held and modified between frames. This variable is maintained at the system level, allowing for the same variable to be used in multiple systems without conflict. If you need one system to be able to modify another system's implementation, you need to use resources instead. This allows for deduplication of systems, as one system can do two jobs based on the state that it was provided. Bevy provides two ways to have local states for a resource. One being the local type wrapper, local t. The other being a runtime initialized variable. This video is focused on the former. The latter will be covered in its own video. Bevy allows you to declare a local t as a system parameter. This wrapper allows Bevy to provide you with an instanced copy of that type inside your system. As seen in this example on screen, where the function hello takes in a local slave, the local t will be initialized with its from world state. For the slave type, I have this being that it is initialized as zero if there is no slaves in the world, and then incrementing by one every time a new slave is created. This allows you for, for you to create two instances of the hello function in your world that will then one be designated the master and the other the slave without any additional code. Any future implementations of the hello function or any other function that uses the local slave will be incremented by one. Bevy allows you to declare many copies of the same local. Unlike the resource type, local types are distinguished by the name of the parameter as opposed to the type given. That allows for one system to have two copies of the same local variable, as long as their parameter name are different. In this example, hello2 takes an isSlave1 and isSlave2, which are both local slaves. Slave1 will be checked to see if it is the master, for slave2 will always be a slave for master will be taken by slave one if it was not already taken by a different system. As seen here, the local T implementation uses the same type as the resource tray. This allows anything that can be initialized as a resource to be used as a local variable. To use a local variable, all you need to do is wrap a type in the local T wrapper provided by Bevy. As long as that type matches the criteria required being being static send and sync then the type will be initialized with its from world value as seen here on the screen where i am initializing the local slave the slave implements its from world implementation that was mentioned earlier in the video if a type implements default it will automatically inherit this as its from world trait once inside a system the local acts just as pointer this allows you to treat it as the type that it wraps in this case, allowing me to access the zeroth parameter and compare it to zero in order to do my functionality or print it to the screen. If you want to edit the value actually held by the local pointer, you need to dereference it and then equal it to the new type. This is also necessary if you want to interact with the type directly and not a parameter or, or method attached to said type, such as wrapping a local U8 or other primitive type. In this example, I'm using a local U size in order to keep track of what shape was last used. In this example, I'm using a local U size in order to keep track of the shape that is next in the function. This allows for when the user inputs their value here, that I can access the next shape by incrementing this value by one and modulating it by the number of values that can be selected from. This results in the function cycling through all the shapes internally without needing to keep a resource. This means that I can have multiple functions all initializing with their own local variable and not need a new type to wrap each in a resource. Okay. In the next couple of examples, I'll show some implementations 
of functions that Bevy already has implementations for, but you may need to use for other more niche situations, such as my first run example here. This contains a local bool that is whether this is the first run of this system. If it's not the first run, then the system will execute the, uh, some code separately than if it is the first run, and then we'll continue to execute the system as normal. This could be used to, to set up a different local that needs to be initialized at runtime or for some other reason isn't initialized from the from world. Or if the system has some kind of reset functionality that may be triggered at runtime that could reset this flag to true. Uh, specifically, it uses false because that is a default value for a boolean as opposed to true for the first system run through, which would require me to implement for world for bool as to being true. The next example uses a wrapper function around a U32 called last state, which would be some kind of hash calculating what the last state may have been for this function. And then it, Bevy already provides change detection for other systems, such as a such as components on a entity. But this system, in this system, I get the last state resource and only run the system if the state has changed since the last time this system ran. This is useful for situations such in a previous game that I've created where I was only updating the chunks that were rendered when the user moved from one chunk to another. So I stored a local copy of what chunk the user was currently standing in and then each frame I would return early if the user had not moved chunks. This prevented any complex logic needing to be run to calculate and redraw chunks unless the user has actively moved from one chunk to another. In this example, the state is first compared with the... In this example, the two states are compared. If they are the same, then it returns early because no changes have been made. Otherwise, the new state is set. Otherwise, the old state is overwritten with the new state and the code executes. This is useful if you have a system that is only updated like once every second and so can maintain a local copy of the state without needing to worry about if the state is being tracked on a per frame change basis because it has its own local copy of the changes in order to keep track of. This would mean that even if the state changed back to what it originally was, the bevy's change function would be triggered if this frame didn't activate every single frame, where once this system runs, it would already detect that the system has gone back to the state that it originally was and doesn't need to run some expensive update logic. Thank you for watching, and I've reached 200 subscribers, which is a huge milestone, and I hope you've all been enjoying the Bevy Basic series. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully they will become more consistent as I have more time to record.